my son, and all the way across the Pacific Ocean. That's charming, isn't it? Yes. Shengtu is a little village far in the interior, miles from the railroad even. We'll have to travel by ox car. Daddy, aren't we nearly there? I think so, my son. You must have patience. Are you all right, my dear? A little tired, Julian. The trip has been so long. Yes. Stockport seems a long way off now. The mission. Our new home. Welcome to Ching Tu, Mr. Cobb. Thank you, sir. This is Mrs. Cobb, my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Cobb? I don't know. May I present you to my venerable friend, Keen Lung. How do you do, sir? And this, I presume, is the successor to my successor, my son, Ezekiel. Glad to meet you, sir. You, too. A cordial greeting, my worthy friend. Thank you, sir. Isn't that funny writing? Our native language, my young missionary. May I have it? Ezekiel. Oh, I, I shall be honored if he would accept it as a gift. Thank you, sir. As he ripens in years, he will learn from it the wisdom of Ling Po, our great poet and philosopher. You are very kind, sir. Now, if you will enter the mission, I will introduce you to your future friend. It would be a privilege, sir. Đi vô chi tu chín rồi. What? Đi vô chi tu chín. Tu chín rồi. So I have to talk a little slower. Go on, đi vô chi tu chín. Tu chín rồi. I guess I just don't understand. Oh, no. Oh, I see. Ezekiel is leaving, and they grieve exceedingly. Yes, I have just bid him Godspeed on his journey. And in a few minutes, he will be gone. It is well, honorable sir. The separation must be borne in fairness to the boy. True, but I am worried. You see, he hasn't been out of this little village in over 20 years. Ah, but he is well versed in languages and the classics. He's educated. As a Chinese gentleman, yes, but he knows nothing of the world. Then this trip to America will broaden his education. It will fit him even more eminently to return and continue your missionary work among us. It's always been my ambition for him to perpetuate this mission. To do that, he must marry. Therefore, a visit to America is necessary for him to find a mother for his children. I realize that. And he's promised to return as soon as he has found a suitable wife. I must give him this to mail in San Francisco. It's a letter to the Reverend Junius P. Withers of our parent church in Stockport. Mm. I'm sure that he will welcome Ezekiel as he gets. <laughs> Goodbye, my son. May God be with you. May I 
probably inquire the direction to the First Church of Scotland. The First Church? Sure. Just grab yourself a bus and hop over the music box on 31st Street. You know where the Red Hot Babies are playing? You'll find it easy. Just buzz any flat foot on the beat. This will be the dope. You got me? Okay. What are you talking about? Uh, pardon me, sir, but I seem to be in a predicament. You see, I'd like to get to the first church of Stockton. Joint you want? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Huh, that was most kind of you. Want me to wait? Oh, no. Uh, I'm to be a guest of the Reverend Junius P. Withers. You see, this is the parent church of my father's mission. Think of that. For what reason? Once more? Why should I think of my father's mission? I'll bite. Why? Well, I enjoyed our little ride exceedingly. Uh, would you allow me to pay you for the use of your conveyance? I'll say I will. Two bucks. Bucks? Couldn't I pay you in dollars? Sure. Just give me three dollars and we'll call it square. Thank you. Hey, buddy! There's a dollar for yourself, for picking an honest guy out of a bunch of crooks. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, will you kindly convey to your master? We don't want any. China. Says you're expecting him. China? Ridiculous. Yes, sir. Do you want to see him? Uh, certainly not. I'm busy. Mr. Withers says he's too busy to see you. Oh, but there, there, there must be some mistake. He don't want to see you. You know, I'm afraid this is my last attempt to become mayor of Stockport. Oh. I'm not as young as I used to be. Oh, forget it. Why, say, it wouldn't be an election if you weren't running on that ticket. Why, say, I, I, I really have a chance to be elected this time, don't you think? Why, sure you have. Yeah. Anyway, we'll know by Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. Well, good day, Mr. Mayo. So long. See you tomorrow. Oh, Jake. Hello, Hi. Pete. Hey, if you're waiting for a parade, there ain't none. Were you addressing me? Uh, what's the big idea? I have no ideas. In fact, I'm quite bewildered. And I don't get gay with me. Sir, I'm far from gay. Now listen, I'll, I'll keep your shirt on, Pete. Where are you from, son? China. China? You, you mean where the laundrymen come from? Yes. Well, what brought you to Stockport? I was born here. Oh, huh. Hometown boy, hey? hey. Any friends here? Well, uh... No, but I have a letter to Teen Wang, a Chinese gentleman. I'm sure he'll welcome me as a guest. Say, that ain't right. White man coming back here, no place to go but a chink. 
Oh, but it was the Chinese that defrayed the expenses of my trip. What, from China? Oh, yes. The celestial Keen Lung sent me to his gracious friend, Lee Wong, in Shanghai, who sent me to the worthy Ma Sing in San Francisco, who sent me the venerable Fu Chi. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean they sort of passed you along one to the other? Yes. You see, Fi Chu was a friend of Ma Sing, and Ma Sing was a friend of Lee Wong, and Lee yeah, Wong was a... Yeah, never mind, never mind. If the chinks can do that for you, I guess an Irishman can stick you to a flop and a boiled egg. Or a taxi, Pete. We'll fix him up at Mrs. Noon's. Well, I'm most grateful, sir, but you see, I, I have a little money. Oh. Well, you might just well put up at the boarding house. It's better than any joint you'll find over in Chinatown. They don't need any ready cash. Oh, no, thank you. You see, I have here a parting gift from the good King Lung. Gold? Holy cat, shut the lid. They say a Chinaman gave you that? But yeah, there's a great friendship between my father and King Lung. Well, I'll say there was. And I thought the Irish were generous. Well, here's your cab, son. Jump oh. in. Thank you. And look out for that jack. That. That best pocket mint of yours. Oh. Well, frankly, I'm worried about this. I'm sure it's exceedingly valuable. Huh. And, well, I've been in constant fear of losing it. <laughs> well, would you like to have me take care of it for you? Why, I deem it a great favor. Say, are you kidding me? I'm sure to be much safer in your keeping. Well, I'll be. I suppose you'd give this to the first one that asked. Certainly not. Only to a person of self-evident integrity. Of which? He who gazes upon the sun need not debate its brilliance. Uh, Ling Po. Ling who? Uh, Ling Po. I quote a great Chinese poet and philosopher. Oh, uh, uh, may I introduce myself? I'm Ezekiel Khan. Uh, Mayo's my name. Jake Mayo. Look me up tonight at the Good Government Club. Uh, thank you, I will. Unless I've been dreaming all this. Oh, uh, Mr. Newton's boarding house, 18 uh, May I get you good day, sir? So long. You poor sap. All right, Sonny. Mayor Morgan's here, Annie. Yes, sir. He's private table. Hey, Chief, look. What do you think of that? Well, this drops dead. Can you imagine that? When did it happen? Honey, I guess the poor sap just got tired running against you. And can you beat it? We're next Tuesday election day. Yeah, they'll have to work fast. Excuse me. Come on with me. I want to make a telephone call. I wonder who they'll nominate in his place. You don't lose any sleep over it, dearie. Why, Ed Morgan could commit murder on the city hall steps and still be reelected. Get me the good government lead. Have you heard the news? Withers, he's dead. Yeah, you're telling us. A fine time you picked to pass out, the old gas bag. Yeah, two days before Hello? election, us without a candidate. Lord, what a mess. Morgan, on the phone for you, yeah. Jake. Oh, this is terrible. The best candidate we ever had. He never had a chance. Hello? Mr. Mayo, I want to offer my condolences on the death of Junius P. Withers, a fine public-spirited citizen. Your good government league has lost a standard bearer whom I highly respected as a rival candidate. Say, listen, you don't have to make a speech. This is a private wire. Oh, well, listen, Jake. You got to replace that old fool in a hurry. I say we do, and we got to decide on another man tonight. What do we want to know? Another candidate? Impossible. Why, Withers was the idol of the reform element. Yeah. And just a sap to the regular. Yeah. That's the idea. Morgan loses the reform vote yeah. anyway. Yeah, well, we'll do that. Okay, Ed. What are the orders, Jake? Morgan says that we can substitute any candidate we want so long as we're sure he's a pushover. But that ought to be easy. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure of that. Folks are getting fed up on Morgan with his games and his drinking. We may need a specially weak candidate this time. Fellow named Cobb, see you, Jake. Cobb? Cobb, who's he? Search me. Said he met you this afternoon. Cobb? Cobb? Oh, hello, Cobb. How are you? Cordial meeting, sir. Hey, listen, Cobb, we're very busy. Do you mind coming around tomorrow? You see, we got a committee meeting here, and... Oh, I'm sorry I intruded. 
But I just read of the untimely death of my friend, Mr. Withers. Your friend? Are you a friend of Withers? Well, I had expected to be his guest. Oh, yeah? Well, why didn't you tell me that? Hey, Jay, hey, we got a lot of work to do, you know. Yeah. Well, come and meet the boys. Just a minute. Uh, fellas, this is a friend of mine, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Slattery, McGee, Morgan, Burke. Uh, Mr. Cobb's from China. Darn if I don't believe it. Say, Cobb, how'd you happen to know Withers? Well, it was his church that maintained my father's mission in China. Are you a missionary? I assisted my father in that work, yes. Say, what is this missionary oh, racket? Sort of cleaning up a joint, you know. Oh, the old reform gag, eh? Yeah, it's the kind of a guy we're looking for as a candidate. I was deeply grieved over Mr. Withers' demise. A splendid character. Say, listen, Cobb. Did you figure on doing any missionary work over here? Not exactly. Uh, but I had hoped to be associated with Mr. Withers during my stay here. Oh, sort of an assistant, hey? Reformer's assistant to carry on his noble work. Uh, famous missionary returns from China to clean up his hometown. Stockport needs me more than China. I, I beg your pardon? Uh, never mind. We were just thinking of something. Uh, say, Cobb, we're very busy. Do you mind if you just sort of mosey along? Oh, I really must apologize. Uh, May I bid you good night? Yeah, well, never mind that now. You trot over to your boarding house. I'll telephone you about 10.30. See, I want to talk to you about something. A telephone? Yeah. How interesting. You know, I've never conversed over a telephone. May I bid you good night? Yeah. Holy cats, he's got me doing it now. Boys, he's it. A missionary, an expert at reforming. Won't the long hairs eat that up. He came all the way from China. But nobody ever heard of him, Jake. Well, what do you suppose they've invented brass bands for? Oh, I can handle that sap. And here's the way we go about it. Oh, uh, pardon me, Mrs. New. Uh, I expect a communication by telephone. I presume you have such an instrument? In the parlor. Journal, will you, sweetheart? There you are, Pet. Thanks. Perhaps if the gentleman's your sweetheart, you'd rather he sat next to you. That's not very funny. Well, I, I did. That's her name. What a charming name. So intimate. Intimate? Yes. Uh huh. Fast worker, aren't you? Uh, not especially. But I fancy I can work as rapidly as another. You see, for years I assisted my father. What'd he do? Play a saxophone? Oh, no. My father. Well, let's was not get into an argument over him. But, Miss Pet, I. My would... name's not Pet. But he just said. Well, that... they called me Pet because I'd slap them down if they called me by my right name. What's that? My mother kept a window box on the fire escape, so she called me Petunia. Perfectly proper. Chinese frequently name their girl children for flowers. You know, I believe that's the telephone. You wouldn't kid me. If you'll excuse me, I'll hold a brief discourse over the instrument. A cordial greeting, my worthy friend. Cordial greeting, my worthy friend. A cordial oh, greeting. Oh, cut the clowning. A cordial greeting, my worthy friend. Can't you come? Say, I'd like to see you tomorrow. Oh, no, nothing important. Just a friendly little chat. Yeah. Drop over to the city club about one o'clock. Yeah, it's in the city hall building. Yeah, so long. All right, boys. Now we go. You'll have to put it over big, Jake. 
They've got to know him. Now, leave it to me. That sap will be the best known guy in Stockport. Remember? City Club tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Say, who is this Ezekiel Connell? I never heard of him. It must be Jake's new candidate. Where did they dig him up? Well, they had to run somebody. Now we get a good feed out of it anyway. I told him 1 o'clock, you heard me. Personally, I think the guy is nuts. Yeah, now we're late. Say, this is getting serious. We can't wait much longer. Well, what are we going to do? He's not at his boarding house, and I don't know where he is. Did you call the jail? Eh? The mail? Yeah. I'll bet it's from him. My honored friend, Teen Wang, has graciously invited me to tea. If it will not inconvenience you, I'll meet you at the city club later in the afternoon. Who in blazes is Teen Wang? Must be a chink. Tea with a chink? Holy cats. Where's that telephone book? Teen. How do you spell Teen Wang? It is a great privilege to welcome so honorable a guest to my lowly abode. No, I beg to differ with you, sir. Privilege is mine. I'm indebted to you for your gracious courtesy. I may humbly beg your pardon, sir. A cordial greeting, my worthy friend. Now, never mind the cordial greeting. You get yourself up to City Club and make it snappy. But, Mr. Mayo, I'm enjoying a bowl of rice with my gracious host. Well, we'll give you some rice up here. Now, you bust out of there in a hurry. I regret I cannot leave so abruptly. Uh, courtesy forbids it. Courtesy, rats. Now, you jump into a taxi and step on it. I shall leave only after a respectful period of friendly discourse. I shall be delighted to converse with you later in the afternoon. Well, I will Well, be. he won't come. He's eating rice. Oh, he won't come, huh? Well, I'll get it. Wait a minute. You can't bring a guest of honor to a banquet at the point of a gun. No, courtesy for business. How about the old nose bag, Jake? We can't take all afternoon for lunch, you know. Starting right away, Nick, right away. Jake, we've got to go through with it. We may arrive in time for my speech. Yeah, let's go. All right, boys. We won't wait till we stop. Oh, oh, I'm right. Eat with a chink. I regret, sir, that I cannot tarry to view some of your treasures of ancient China. Ah, but you will visit me quite frequently, my friend. I'm very grateful, sir, for the great kindness you've shown. And now, if you so desire, I will point out the way to the city hall. And, gentlemen, I regret to inform you that at the last moment, our guest of honor was taken ill. Slight attack of um, indigestion, wasn't it, Mr. Mayo? Yeah, from eating rice. But the Good Government League is going to honor him just the same. And as chairman of the reception committee, I now propose a toast. Gentlemen, I give you Ezekiel Cobb. Yeah. Ezekiel Cobb, a man of honor, a man of ideals, a man of determination, a man of whom Stockport is proud. Where is that voice coming from? The radio, of course, in that car. We need a man of his experience in the great work of reform. And we are going to ask him to continue this work in the city of his birth, to take up the burden where the late Reverend Junius P. Withers laid it down. We are going to ask Mr. Cobb a momentous question. The Good Government League wants him to carry on for his faithful friend and associate. And we are going to ask him if he will join forces with us in our grim battle against graft and corruption. We are going to ask him at the last moment to replace the late Julius P. Withers and to accept the nomination for mayor. <laughs> and if he will accept this nomination, the Good Government League will be able to point to him with pride and say, there, gentlemen, is the next mayor of Stockport. And it doesn't make any difference whether you know anything about politics or not. Why, we haven't elected a candidate in 12 years. And it's a sense you ain't going to spoil our record. Gentlemen, if there's no chance of my being elected mayor, why do you wish me to become a candidate? Don't you understand? We've got to put up a show to make the people think they're really having an election. Morgan gets in, licks up the gravy, and there's plenty left to pass around among the boys. Oh, well, <laughs> that isn't the idea at all, Jake. Uh, listen, Cobb. You believe in standing up for a principle, even if they knock you down, don't you? Certainly. Well, that's the idea. The city government is full of graft and corruption. Are you going to sit by and not even raise your voice in protest? Perhaps you're right. 
You know, the lowly fisherman is helpless to hold back the tidal wave, but his warning cry may save his neighbor's children. Ling Po. You took the words right out of my mouth. Cobb, it's your duty. Your sacred duty. Perhaps it is. But on the other hand, I have another duty to my father in China. You see, gentlemen, it is his wish that our family perpetuate his mission there. And therefore, I came to America simply to find a mother for my children. <coughs> Say, now listen, Cobby, the election will be all over by Tuesday. You won't need a mother for your children until next Tuesday, will you? No, of course not. You might as well pick out a good one while you're at it. And after Tuesday, you'll have plenty of time to look the dames over. You really feel that it's my duty? Sure it is. It's you. what you said was, Spike? It's sacred duty. But I must return to China as soon as the election's over. I'll accept the nomination only on condition that you assure me that there isn't a chance of my being elected mayor. Not a chance. Not, Not a, a chance. chance. Better hurry, boys. Clamp will be down any minute now. How do they know who he is? Don't worry. Jake and May will be leading him by the hand. Hey, Ray. I hear Morgan laughing now. Hi, Beth. What's all the rumpers? Now, well, Mayo's got his new candidate for mayor up in the city club. We're just hanging around to grab off a few headlines. See, this has got to be a one-day campaign, and there isn't much you can do, seeing you're new in the game. Uh, you desire me merely to lend my moral support. Yes, you just lay low, and we'll tell them all about you. Oh, Jake. Uh, did you get him to accept the nomination? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, here he comes, boys. This ought to be him. Okay, let him come. Oh, nerds. Where is that guy? Ah, Jake must be home now. Hey, Sonny. Out of the way, will you, or you'll be in the picture. Oh, uh, yes, certainly. Probably some funny-looking old guy like they had the last time. Yeah, with long hair and a beard. Sure, Leave it to Jake to pick a pushover. Well, Miss Pratt. Oh. You. This is indeed a pleasant surprise. A cordial greeting. My worthy friend, why don't you get a new line? A, a line? Or better still, don't try to be funny. Say, so here it is. This must be him. Well, for the love hey, of... Jake, where's your new candidate? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, where are you hiding him, Jake? Oh, there he is, boys. Turn your guns around. But that guy? But I assure you, Miss Pratt, I wasn't trying to be comical. At that, I guess you don't have to try. Hey, Mr. Carr. Now, let's have another moment. Oh, yeah. oh, but, but, oh, thank you, Mr. Oh. Cobb. Don't mind if I do. Why, thank you Wait, so very much. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say, is that the new candidate? Yeah, he came from China. Why? Copy. Pose for another. Yeah, yeah that's that way. Don't you hit it with you. Yeah, that's good idea. Shake hands with him. Shake hands. Hey, put on that funny looking hat. Yeah. That's a swell hat. A politician without a cigar in his mouth? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, puff on the sun. Get it cooking good. Good. Oh, oh, right. oh, no. One more. One more. Oh, oh, yeah, Tommy, you won't need it. Hold it down. 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 Hold now, Mr. Cobb's busy. You shoot us down over the bank, Mr. Cobb. How about a statement for the paper? Yeah, give us a lowdown on the reform racket. How was the missionary business in China? Now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Mr. Cobb's not ready to make a statement. You see, he's got to study the situation. Oh, now, Is that right. supposed yeah. to be funny, too? Oh, no. Uh, oh, we, what uh, kind? I, I beg your pardon? They always start by buying cigarettes. What a strange custom. Uh, may I purchase some? Fifteen cents. And four dollars for the cigar. Thank you. So you're going to run for mayor? Oh, yes. Uh, they, they've convinced me it's my duty, even though defeat is inevitable. Yeah, yeah. After all, should the lark cease singing because winter must come? Ling Po. I don't know, should it? Well, I was just... Say, is Jake Mayo paying you to do this? Certainly not. Then you're really a sap. A sap? Well, I suppose somebody had to be the cat's paw. Are you insinuating? Oh, no, don't bother about it. It'll all be over tomorrow, and I suppose you'll never know the difference. Say, uh, are those clothes tattooed on you? Tattooed? Well, I, I don't believe so. 
the uh, come on and all? Yeah, certainly. Then I'd suggest that you turn them in and get something that a dog wouldn't want to bury. Oh, I see. You feel that my clothes are unsuitable here. Well, it's very kind of you to advise me. Oh, no, it's just a bad habit with me. I'm always buying milk for stray fox or bringing home old alley cats. You're jesting, Miss Petunia. Say, mention that name again and you'll be sprawling in the gutter. The name's Pratt to strangers and Pep to friends. <laughs> well, which am I? Well, you're not a stranger and you're not a friend. I guess you better not call me any name. When you speak to me, just say, say. Ezekiel! 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 Yeah, Ezekiel Cobb. China's gift to Stockport. Yeah, in big letters. Hey, Jake, couldn't we get one of them skyrockets to spell Cobb when it busts? Okay, okay. Did you get that balloon up with Cobb's name on it? Good. Hey, Jake, President of the Women's Club just made a four-hour speech endorsing Cobb. Yeah, not another band in the city. I'll get a guy to sing the stock back and back. A great show, Jake. Oh, wow. And he came all the way from China. <laughs> The key's doing his stuff. What about a valley who to get a few votes we're sure of anyway? Cobb's here, Jake. Do you want to see him, huh? Cobb? Sure, bring him in. Come in, Cobby. Say, you're going like a house of fire. We're proud of you. Great work, kid. Great work. Well, thank you, but I just dropped in to see if there wasn't something I could do. No, nah, it's all over but the shouting. The boys got soft feet praying and the bands don't know any more tunes. We're already closed up shop and go home. Go home nuts. After that day's work, I need some relaxation. Bottles of it. Yeah, that's a good idea. You too, Cobby. Forget it. Relax. Yeah, go and get yourself a twist. What? A twist. Yeah, go and have a nice little supper. There's your report, Jake. Yeah. Myself a twist? Come in. Shades of Ling Po. What's the big idea? Uh, I, I followed your advice and purchased some new clothes. Well, you're not getting married, are you? Oh, no. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayo suggested I get myself a twist for a quiet little supper. He did? So what? Well, uh, you're really the only twist I know. Oh, oh, I get the idea. Oh, a very pretty compliment. And where do you want to go? Uh, well, Mr. Mayo suggested some nice, quiet spot. Uh, which would he in keeping with a high ideal to reform for which I stand? Yeah, yeah? Well, I know a nice, quiet spot. <laughs> Yes, uh, very interesting, but I'm afraid Mr. Mayo wouldn't approve of this place. Yeah, Jake's pretty particular. Hi, Jake. Hi, Red. Hi, Red. Holy smoke, look. Cobb, can you beat it? Now, this is a fine place for a missionary. Well, he ought to be able to find a mother for his children out of that place. I told him to keep out of sight this sap. Oh, so you want him out of sight, huh? Well, here he goes. Now, wait a minute. You do more harm than you'll do good if you raise an office. You going to do your old-fashioned girl number next? What do you think I'm putting this trick dress on for? Now, make that pretty loose that got stuck last night. Come in. Say, Chief, Cobb's downstairs. What? Yeah, with a dang. What's the idea of bringing the reform candidate into a place like this? Looks phony to me. A long hair posing as a regular. Want me to take care of him? Now, I like this music much better. It's more romantic. Uh-uh. I wonder if I may confide in you. You mean tell me a secret? Well, yes. Oh, that'd be fun. I'll play checkers, too. Well, you see, I'm thinking of marriage. A beautiful thought. I consider it a duty. It usually is. A duty to perpetuate my father's mission in Cheng, too. Oh. You, you see, I really came to America to find myself a wife. I thought you said you weren't a fast worker. Oh, well, I'm not especially. But I would like to ask you a question. May I? Well, I... I suppose you might as well get it over with. I want to ask you, why is it that all American girls are so lacking in individuality? What? Well, they all look alike. Big-eyed and 
pasty-faced and, well, one exactly like the other. <laughs> How interesting. Yes, and furthermore, they seem to like that sense of inferiority that a woman should have in the presence of a man. Oh, they do. Yes, I, I'm disappointed. I doubt whether I shall be able to find an American girl that will make me a suitable wife. I'm just a woman, but you're a man. You command an all. There's a girl who'd make a good wife for you. Yes, she is the type. She's modest, retiring, and very attractive, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she'd be right at home as a missionary's wife in China. Yes, uh, she seems so out of place here. You know, uh, the song of the thrush is thrice beautiful amid the discordant call of the crow. Lake Poe. I guess that makes me a crow. Honey, anything at all you ask me to do, I'll gladly do and smile. I would go with you right to the ends of the earth. Love makes it worth a while. Maybe it's right, dear. Maybe it's wrong. I don't care what people. I think that was my idea, do you? What do you expect me to think? Parading the reform candidate around like that? Now, wait a minute, Ed. Oh, if I thought you were trying to double cross. Come on, Mike. Let's get going. Oh, no. Forget it, Ed. I'll see you the first thing in the morning. You bet your life, you will. You will. I'll explain. Uh, a new angle on reform. Oh, Square, Rich, you're intruding on our social life. Oh, you're a reform 
candidate to put on an act like that. How about a statement that to you, Mr. Morgan? Ain't you got to denounce an acting missionary? Don't bother. Now, will you start going off the mayor? Come on, Ed, let's be going. Now, don't you worry about me. Let me tell you something. I think don't bother me. Let me tell you, nobody can double cross me again. Will you let me alone? Rival candidates. Oh, what a story. Are those telephones? Well, you have got your points. Better call an ambulance. No, no, he's all right. He's getting to his car. You young idiot, what did you do that for? I forgot myself. I acted without thinking. This is terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I'll say it's terrible. If this gets in the papers, it'll bring you thousands of votes. Huh? Yeah, big fight. Cut it off. Stop it right now. I want to lose it. Say, do you know this story is liable to elect him? I knew all along he was a great guy. Sure you did. Well, here he is now. Hooray for Battling Carl! Oh, How's the fighting missionary? Oh. You sure made the, the headline. headline. I bet he hasn't seen the paper yet. Here, take mine. Uh, thank you. I'd rather not read it. Say, you're not sorry you suck, Morgan, are you? No, I'm not. That's just the trouble. He is twice guilty who regrets not an unworthy act. We pull. I got some nice hotcakes for you, Mr. Carl. I don't believe I care for my breakfast. What's the matter, China? I'm humiliated, Miss Pratt. Ashamed. They made me a candidate at a good government league, and I can't even govern myself. Where are you going? To visit my friend, Teen Wang. I, I must regain my serenity of spirit. Ling Po. and lay low. They're liable to be here any minute. Who? What? The reporters, we gotta do something fast. Now, don't you talk to anyone. Yes, but, but I don't understand. I gotta figure out what you gotta say. Say? About what? About what? About being elected mayor, of course. Elected mayor? Who? You, you sap. Only five precincts missing. You're in by a mile. I? I'm elected mayor? Yes. No. Yes. In the newspaper? What's the latest? He's elected. Jake Mayer just told me. He's upstairs with Cobb now. Boy, I bet they're celebrating. <laughs> but I don't want to be mayor. I don't know how to be mayor. Now, now, you told me that I never would be mayor. Yeah, but I never told you to go around sucking people on the nose, did I? Yes. It's the wrong fault. Well, what are we going to do? Yes, uh, you you got to get me out of it. Yeah, well, I'm sure going to try. Now, listen. Morgan's waiting outside for me in his car. I'll slip him up here before the reporters come. We'll figure out what to do. Now, you sit tight. I'll be right back. Oh, congratulations, Jay. Uh, well, oh. Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Miss Pratt. Isn't this terrible? What? What? I, I, I've got to be mayor. Oh, well, it's all a circus anyway, and every circus must have its clown. This is serious, Miss Pratt. The term of office is for two years. I can't stay away from my father's mission that long. My duty lies in China. Oh, yeah, you and your wife. Miss Pratt, they need to me. To reform them, I suppose. Rats. 
Well, there's more reforming to be done right here in this town than in all of China put together. It's filthy with corruption, crooks, grafters, racketeers. Say, you have bandits in China, haven't you? Well, they're a bunch of pansies compared to the bandits over here. Pansies? Oh, go to bed. Do you really think that I could... Uh... You couldn't do anything. Imagine you being mayor of this town. Well, that's a man's job, a fight. I knew you couldn't fight, but you, you don't even want to fight. But, Miss Pratt... Oh, go on and run. Pick up your legs and run with your tail between them. My tail? Yeah, beat it back to China with that wife of yours and spend the rest of your life teaching little Chinese children how to blow their noses. Right up here, Ed. He's waiting for us. Is this it? Yes, yeah, right in there. Come on, copy. We'll go in your room. Close the door. Come on. Now, see here, Cobb. I haven't got much time. We've got to talk fast. This whole thing is fantastic. It's a miracle. It couldn't have happened, but it did. Now, we've got to figure out some way to get... Say, will you listen? Oh, oh yes. A, a way to figure out to... Uh, to get you out of this. Oh, oh, yes, yes. There's only some way for him to resign. But Mr. Mayo, it just occurs to me. Why are you so anxious to get rid of me after you worked so hard to elect me? Well, you don't think he wanted you elected, do you? Well, of course, son, it was just a show, but we meant to do right by you. Oh. You mean you nominated me because I was more likely to be defeated than anyone else? This is politics, you fool. Why, sure, son. Now, we've got to be reasonable. We have to elect Morgan. His organization takes care of us. And she was right. I can't, Paul. Now, let's get down to cases. You've been elected mayor. Yes, and I've been elected mayor. And the point is... The point is that I'm going to be mayor without any interference from you or anybody else. Now, wait a minute. You're not talking to the newspapers. No, I I'm talking to you. Why do you think, with a chance to do some good in this town, that I'm going to pick up my tail and run? You'd better... Do you realize, Mr. Morgan, that this town is filthy with corruption? Now, hold on it's now. It's full of bandits. We have bandits in China, yes, but they're a bunch of uh, buttercups compared to the ones you have in this town. Uh, well, wait a minute. I can't keep those reporters downstairs much longer. They're yelling for Mr. Carr. Oh, quickly, they must have seen you. Backstairs this way. So you said you could handle them, eh? <laughs> well, you better. Oh, I will. Don't worry. Stall them off a minute if you can. Well, I can't. All right, Cobb. You're mayor. That's settled. But now you listen to me. You're going to do just as you're told, you understand? You can sit back and look important. But the organization will run the city now. Is that clear? It's very clear. Okay, then remember. Now, let me do the talk. Come on, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Got a sizzling statement on the tip of your tongue? Come right in, boys. Mr. Cobb is just going to send for you. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. You sure put over a fast one. Yes, it is. How about a story for the fighting mission? Tell us all about how you're going to reform this boy. We got Mr. Cobb, you know, among friends. Now, I'll talk to Mr. Cobb if you don't mind, boys. She's had a hard day, and he's dead tired. Ain't you, Mr. Cobb? Not at all. I'm not the least tired. Go ahead, Mayor. Shoot the work. Sure. Didn't they tell you what to say? Oh, yes. I was told I should sit back and allow the organization to run the city. Now, wait a minute. You... This I refuse to do. Hey, Jake, he's reading the wrong speech. I don't think I should allow anyone to dictate my actions. I realize that I know nothing whatever about governing a city. Therefore, I shall welcome advice. The blind man, lest he stumble in darkness, uh, welcomes the guiding footsteps even of an ass. Ling Po. What? And he looked right at you, Jake. Who is this Ling Po? A sage who lived under the Chin Lung dynasty. Well, he certainly knew his onions. Say, Mr. Cobb, what job does Jake Mayo get? Well, uh, Mr. Mayo has been very kind to me. I find in him many splendid qualities as a man. But as a politician, well, I question his honesty. Wow. Can we publish that? Uh, certainly. Why not? Let me out of here. That's enough for an extra edition. Oh, okay. yeah. Say, would you anything more from Lingo? Yeah. Say, what was that crack you made about me? Oh, cats. Listen to that. Jeez, look at that mob. Brass bands and everything. Uh, Mr. Mayo, I hope you're not offended. Offended I haven't got time to be. Now, they're yelling for you, and you've got to make a speech, and this time, you're going to say what I tell you. Well, I shall, providing I approve of your sentence. Sentiments by I, now get this. Fellow citizens, I've been elected mayor on a wave of popular indignation. I'm going to give this city an honest, fearless government. 
a government with the best interests of the people at heart. For first, last, and always, I am a servant of the people. I'll work 24 hours a day to make this the best run city in the United States. Now, you got that? Why, Mr. Mayo, that's splendid. Th that's exactly what I'd like to do. Well, that's just hogwash for the public. Now, get out there and say it. Well, I'll be glad to. Now, let's see. I think I got an almost word for word. citizens. Uh, first, last, and always a servant of the people? Yes, yes. Uh, hello, citizens. I'll do the best I can. I tell you, I won't stand for it. You think I'm going to have my salary cut in half? Well, now, don't worry, Lou. I'll talk to him about that. Well, don't you better, you because I won't stand for it. Mayor Carvin, I'm going to see him right away. Well, what's up? What's up? I... That, that idiotic mayor of yours has vetoed my bill for a municipal hothouse for yellow chrysanthemums. Well, I'll speak to him, Carvin. Just give me time. But he, he can't do that, I know he can't. Would you excuse me just a minute? I'll... Oh, say, Mayor. Yeah? Did you tell that young fool to veto the garbage franchise? <laughs> of course not. I begged him to. Do you realize that he's robbing me of a cool hundred thousand? Me, with a family of five children? I know, Pete, but you can talk to him this afternoon. I will. And if he quotes another Chinese proverb, I'll kill him. Hi, Jake. I see Lane Poe made the headlines again. Why? Don't get sore, Jake. Uh, you can handle him. You can handle him. Yes, you can. Hi, Red. Hi, boy. Well, what has he done today? Well, he hasn't torn down a city hall yet. But he vetoed the bus franchise. And will Morgan like that? That guy's not smucking the Morgan crowd. Here's the screwiest one yet. Advertising for Commissioner of Public Works. Oh. Boys, here's the payoff. He just fired Police Commissioner Moriarty. He did? Yeah! Good morning, Mr. Moriarty. Say, Mayo. What in thunderation is the meaning of this? Now what? Now what? I'm fired. No! Yes. Holy cats, what next? Say, Mayo, he can't get away with this. I have been police commissioner for... Of course months. he can't, Dan. Now, wait a minute. I'll talk to him. Is the mayor in his office? He just stepped out to lunch, Mr. Mayo. Yes, he would. Who with? I'm not sure, sir, but he said something about a Mr. Wang. Wang? 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 That chink again. And I hardly know which way to turn next. The method of government is so complicated, I cannot understand it. But you do understand the difference between right and wrong. That is always simple. Continue to act simply, and you will be acting wisely. Yes, but wisdom without experience is like water without a pail that needs to carry it. The great sword of Fu Wang? It's a treasure I have long sought, a relic of the ages. Would it not please you to feast your eyes upon it? Indeed, yes. Mayor Cobb here. This was Mr. Wang, sir. Yeah. One side, monkey. Pardon me, sir, but you cannot go down there. Kifu is unpacking the shipment and will bring the Greek sword here immediately. Hey, Cobb. I got a message for you. There's two words. And they are? Lay off. Lay where? You got me. This comes straight from Morgan. He don't like the way you're acting. I take that for a threat. I'll say it's a threat. Mr. Strasser, you irritate me. Your childish threats are very annoying. Yeah? You seek to frighten with a weakness you think is new. Why, in China, they've dealt with bandits like you for 4,000 years. This ain't China. I'm liable to forget that it isn't. I may resort to a Chinese system that is centuries old and cut off your heads. 
<laughs> and if I start beheading, I'll begin with you. Say, look here, Cobb. If you think that you're gonna... What the... Trying to throw a scare into me, eh? May I bid you good day, Mr. Strassi? Now let's look upon the great sword of Fu Wong. Just remember what I told you. And to think this is the very sword which the great Fu Wong beheaded every bandit in the city of Gang Wong. Don't forget, we mean business. It's still very sharp. Just watch out. That's all. What time do you say he'd be back? Two o'clock. Yes. It's three now. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Hey, what's been keeping you? I'm sorry I'm late. I had to buy some cigarettes. Well, that frat dame sells matches too, and they're cheaper. Say, you young idiot. Idiot? You fired the police commissioner. I'm quite aware of the fact. Well, why? I learned he was accepting graft. Oh, you don't mean it. Now, listen, Cobby, this has got to stop. It's all right to make a bluff at reform, but you're going too far. You're busting up the whole machine. Machine? Yeah, the system. The system has taken us years to build. Now, there's enough gravy washing around this town to put us all on Easy Street. And just when we get it organized, you think we're going to let a little cockeyed fool like you? Mr. Mayor, I like you. Hey? Eh? I've never known any white man well, except my father and you. A fine man, my father. He's devoted his life to the needy in China. Taught them, cared for the sick, helped them in times of famine. You know, you're very much like my father. Huh? Now, this is no time for kidding. No, I'm serious. I believe you would do that. You would help the needy. You would make sacrifices for him. But on top of that, you're a crook, aren't you? Well, what of it? Now, that's what I like about you. You're so honest in your dishonesty that, at heart, I believe you're honest. Say that again, kind of slow-like. That gives me a thought. Get me the City Press Association. Well, what, what are you up to? I've solved a problem. City Press Association? I've just appointed a police commissioner to replace Daniel Moriarty. Well, who are you gonna... I just appointed Mr. Jake Mayo. Hey, you can't do that with... It's done. Holy cats. And he fires me because he says I didn't agree with some guy named Ling Po. I'm telling you, Chief, that chink joint give me the creeps. You should have seen it. Oh, forget it. When were you notified, Dan? This morning, right out of a clear sky. And all he kept talking about was cutting off my head. He dug up the dirt about that gambling joint and spilled the whole story to the papers. And you know he vetoed the bus franchise, too. All right, we'll give him one more chance. The Board of Aldermen have just passed the bill awarding the street cleaning contract to my company. If he vetoes that, we'll start to move in on him and we'll move fast. Take him for a ride, eh? No. No, there's a better way than that to put him out of the way. I tell you, I won't be police commissioner. What do my friends think? What do my... Say, will you pay some attention to me? Oh, pardon me. Uh, what were you saying? I, I don't want to be police commissioner. Why not? Well, you can't make a silk sow... You can't make a sow's poison... Well, anyway, you can't. He who's lived in the jungle is best equipped to fight wild beasts. What? That Ling Po. What do you mean, lived in the jungle? $700,000. That's rather a high figure, isn't yeah, it? Why? Yeah, of course it is. There's another one for $200,000 less. Yeah, Jake Mayo, police commissioner. Think of my reputation. Isn't that company as good as this one? Oh, sure it is, but it ain't Morgan's. And if you think I'm going to reform at my age, you're crazy. I... What are you doing? I'm going to veto this bill. Now, wait a minute, son. I'd go easy on that one if I were you. For what reason? Well, that's Morgan's pet graft. I don't think you'd live to be an old man if you vetoed that. Well, you heard what I just said, didn't you? Yes, but what else could I do? Morgan controls the company. It's obviously dishonest. Well, that settles it. Son, you're talking to the best police commissioner this town ever had. Put it there. Hey, what are you looking at? I'm looking at the moon. 
Oh. Yeah. There's the moon. There he is. And I was thinking, what a beautiful time that I have with you, Miss Pet. Why, China, you outdo yourself. Well, it's all quite true. And an evening spent with you benefits me like an evening talking to my friend, Teen Wang. A Chinaman? Oh. Oh, well, that's great. You mean you enjoy my mind? Oh, I do. I find it quite first rate. It's much better than going out with a beautiful woman. I hear all you say. Perhaps you'd enjoy it even more if we spent the evening on the telephone. Oh, well, no. But it would be charming talking to you on the telephone. And save a lot of walking. We could take turns dropping nickels. Yeah, that'd be very amusing. Wouldn't it, though? And thrilling. I can hardly wait. I believe we're arriving at our destination. Oh, well, after all, beauty's only skin deep. I must talk to you, please, please. Enter the thrush, exit the crow. Uh, if you don't mind. Oh, no, I'm going to read a book to improve my mind, you know. We must be alone. Where can we go? But we are alone. We might be interrupted out here in the street. Let's go inside. Uh, but uh, just a moment. Maybe I'm a fool to do this. I don't know. I don't know anything. Well, that's quite possible, but... Wait a minute. Uh, but what are we doing in here? Yes. This is my bedroom. It is? Oh, I know you think this is bold of me. And I'm not really bold, Mr. Cobb, if you knew me. Well, as I remember you at our last meeting, you were not exactly timid. Who's that? Don't open the door. Uh, well, why not? They must have seen you. Oh, but they think. Send them away. Cobby! Yeah, just a minute. Don't let him in, please. Ah. Please. Well, very well now. Now, don't worry. Ah. Yes, yes. I want to uh, talk to you. Just a minute. Uh, uh, let's go down to the parlor. It's much more comfortable there. Well, I wouldn't be comfortable no matter where we were. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a draft in here. You might get something. Uh, Is there anything the matter? There must be. Now listen, Cobby. The town's hot with rumors. They're saying that you got a slice of that company that you get the street cleaning job to. That your graft is making Morgan look like a piker. Why, they've even called out the grand jury and they got him pointed right at you. They got something on you and you know it. Maybe you know a lot of things. Say, if you got it split in that company, you must have grabbed off 50 grand. And no wonder you'd be told Morgan's bill. And you preaching to me about honesty. I guess I'm pretty dumb after all. Yeah, he's too smart for you, Jake. Say, well, what do you mean? He's got a mind. He has what a mind. Why, to figure out a nifty little double cross is just child's play for him. Just double cross? Mean... Him? Why not? Grave is gravy, you know. They even put it on chop suey. Why, you little... If I wasn't a gentleman, I'd... Him a crook? Why, he hasn't got brains enough to be crooked. Well, that's true. But if he did have, he wouldn't be. If ever a white man was dead on the level, you're looking at one right there. Are you sure of that? You can bet your life I'm sure of it. Well, then I can go back to my book. Yeah. Mm. Now, don't you worry, Cobby. They can't fool me with the rumors. It's just... Uh, say, will you listen to me? Oh, y yes, of course. Oh, never mind. Forget it and go to bed. Now, I'll take care of everything. Bed. I know the game. I played it myself. It's a big bluff. Just a big play for public feeling. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. But it's a cinch they haven't got anything on you so far because I've been sticking too close to you. And from now on, son, I'm a porous plaster because we've got to be careful. Now, don't you go out tonight. I'll see you at the office the first thing in the morning. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. Now, don't forget, go right to bed. Yes, uh, right away. At least almost right away. Fighting mayor, look out. Hurry up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cobb. You're so brave. 
Oh, close the window, quick. They make them back. They didn't hurt you. No, they were after these letters. Oh, how can I explain? My honor is at stake. Your honor? I'm so afraid. I know they'll follow me. And if they ever steal these letters, I, I can't bear to think of them. Now, now, please. Mr. Cobb, you have a safe deposit box in the bank, haven't you? Yes, but... Then keep this for me, please. Keep it as a sacred trust. Now, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather... Oh, it means so much to me. It means my honor, my life. It means... Oh, the shame of it all. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Oh, very well. I shall depart. Darling. Yes, but now it's much against my better judgment. That makes it so much sweeter of you, you dear uh, uh, man. Yes, now, if, if I may bid you good night. <laughs> Promise you'll put that envelope in your safe to deposit box first yes. thing in the morning. Yes, I will. On your way to the office? Yes, yes. Promise. Yes, I shall promise. Oh, don't. Can't. Well, that's one thing you can't do over the telephone. But, but, but the lady was merely expressing her gratitude for a small favor that... Favor? You flatter yourself. But Miss Pitt, I would like to explain. Wipe the lipstick off your mouth and go to bed. Miss Pitt. This makes me realize a very important fact. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, now, I can't shout it through a closed door. Then keep it to yourself. But I must tell you. I find I'm profoundly attached to you. I believe I love you. In fact, I know I love you. I'd like you to marry me. Would you marry me, Miss Pitt? I love you. Go to bed, you idiot. Listen, Neil, this grand jury stuff's a bluff. It's all a bluff. I know that Morgan sits you on the kit and you try to get something on him. But you ain't got nothing yet and you never will have. Nevertheless, I'm going to challenge him to turn over to me the key to his safety deposit box in the National Bank. Yeah. Yeah, and if he refuses, I'll get out a court order permitting me to open it. Well, you won't have to. You can open it any time you want it. That's how much I'm sold on that kid. Yeah? Mayor Cobb is calling you, Mr. Mayo. Hello, Cobby. I'm down in the lobby, Mr. Mayo. Uh, yes, I'll be a little late for that conference. Uh, I've got to buy some cigarettes. Oh, you can see her tonight. Come right up, will you? The district attorney's here. No, wait a minute. Meet me at the bank right away. I'm coming down there with a couple of friends of mine. Now, Mr. Neal, I'm just going to call you a bluff. Well, since you're so confident, perhaps you'd like to have the newspaper men present. Sure, bring them along. They can publish a story that will squash your dirty rumors once and for all. All right, Ned, phone the boys and tell them to meet us at the bank. Yeah. <laughs> City Press Association. <laughs> Paul, what's the betting, boys? What's the betting? Just a attorney in one round. I'll take Cobb on knock They're in their corners. Ah, here they are now. Well, how are you, Mr. Mayor? Uh, uh, good morning, gentlemen. It seems a rather unusual request, but, uh... Well, I have no objections to your opening the box, providing you touch nothing of a personal nature. We're interested in nothing except evidence of political corruption. Well, naturally, you'll not find that. <laughs> you said it, old man Mayo never would have brought you here. Uh, if you'll follow me, gentlemen. Do these old nostrils deceive me, boys, or do I smell dynamite? There you are, gentlemen, if you care to examine. <laughs> Put on your glasses, Neil. You're going to need them. Two to one, it's full of rice. <laughs> What's that? A passport. Ah, the mayor himself. Well, that ought to prove something. That Chinese photography doesn't do you justice, Mr. Cobb. Yeah, grab again, Neil. This is lots of fun. What's that? Proverbs of Ling Po. A first edition, too. Got any pictures in it? Read us a couple of proverbs. Now, there's evidence of corruption, Neil. Uh, just a minute, <laughs> gentlemen. Just a minute. What's this? Now, that I must forbid you to open. May I ask why? 
Well, it has nothing whatsoever to do with my administration. Well, what is it, son? Well, I really don't know. It was entrusted to my care. Well, let's open it. Certainly not. I'm sure it contains papers of a very personal nature. I'll bet it does. Say, son, why didn't you tell me? It certainly arouses my curiosity. Uh, give me that envelope, Mr. Neal. Now, this is going too far. Now, just a moment, Mr. Cobb. Why are you afraid to open this? I cannot. It's a matter of honor. Yes, I'll say it is, and I'm going to find out who's on. How honor. dare you? Oh, now, wait a minute, son. He can get a court order and do it anyway. But I won't let him do this. I can't let him do this. Tell me what's in that envelope. Papers of a very personal nature, Mr. Mayo. Would you like to see them? Well, I'll be... Can you beat it? Gentlemen, you'll recall that Mr. Cobb vetoed a bill giving the street cleaning contract to the Great Excelsior Company. What has that got to do And then awarded the contract to the Northeastern Company. Were you in any way interested in the Northeastern Company, Mr. Cobb? Not in the least. And how do you account for these 1,500 shares of stock in that company made out in your name? What? Say, what kind of a cockeyed game is this? You say there's stock made out there in my name? Plenty. And shares in the Golden City Bus Company as well. Another of your vetoes, Mr. Cobb. And I thought he was a sap. Gee, this story tops them all. Well, boys, an open and shut case of ever there was one. Looks like curtains, Mr. Cobb. Say, son, what does it mean? Ain't you gonna say nothing? If your enemy's jewels be found in your pouch, utter no word. For silence is the friend of the accused. Ling Po. What's the matter, China? Been to a funeral? Package of nipples, please. But last night, Miss Pet, in a moment of stress, I asked you to become my wife. Stress? What do you mean, stress? Well, if you don't mind, I would like to withdraw that request. Oh, changed your mind? Yes. Well, I want any witnesses, so I can't sue. What's wrong with me? Don't I match in daylight? Oh, on the contrary, you're more desirable now than ever. Well, that's something. But I, well, if I ever was desirable, I ceased to be. Oh, your beauty almost drove me mad. You're derisive. Well, I hardly blame you. I see now what a joke it was when I was elected mayor. I also realize that. I'm not equipped to fit into this civilization. My place is in Cheng, too, my father's side. In China, I wasn't funny, Miss Pet. I was even useful at times. I should never have left. Come on, Cobby, the boys are up your office. They're waiting for a conference. What's happened, Jake? Frame up. He's sunk. Say, if I told you the story he told me, you wouldn't believe he could be so dumb. I certainly would. I'm a firm believer in the gentleman's dumbness. How'd they do it? Morgan's Dame. Oh, the old-fashioned girl. Come on, Tommy. You've got to hug. Stay with them, China. For the glory of old Ling Po. Come on, son. They're in the conference room. If ever a crook was caught red-handed... Why, they've got enough evidence to send him to jail till doomsday. They'll rush his conviction, too. He hasn't a chance. The main thing to do is to protect the organization. We've got to issue a statement to the press publicly disavowing him. That won't be necessary, gentlemen. Cobb. Well, Cobb, after all, uh, we can't help. No. To help me, you'd have to defy the racketeers that control this town. If that endangered your property or your lives, you'd be afraid to do it. Just a moment, Cobb. You're not only cowardly, you're selfish. Your only thought is to save yourselves. Well. You needn't worry about your reputation, gentlemen. You need not disavow me. I'm going to disavow you. Now, hold on, Cobb. It is I who shall issue the statement to the press, repudiating you and your whole party. From this moment, I'm my own political organization, party of one. I shall stand alone or fall alone. I bid you good morning. Cabby, what's the catch? Now, what are you going to do? I think I'll buy some cigarettes. X Street Paper, Governor to remove Mayor Cobb. Thanks for the lunch, China. X Street, Governor to remove Mayor Cobb. Pay me. Oh, won't be long now. No, uh, Mr. Mayo's told me that my removal by the governor is certain. By tomorrow, I shall no longer be mayor. Well, how about the day? One day? Why, in weeks as mayor, I've accomplished nothing. Men who could have helped me, they've hampered me. 
Well, you've thrown them all out, haven't you? Yes. No, I have no obligations to anyone. I stand as head of the city alone. Sort of a dictator, huh? Why not? Say. 24 hours. Dictator. But, Cobby, you can't do that. You couldn't get away with it. I've never had to pull a job like that before. Now, you don't know what you're saying. You... Why, it's lawless. Lawless, it's loony. It can't be done. Say, what are you reading? Oh, uh, Mr. Shigley, I appointed you chief of police because Mr. Mayo told me that I could depend upon you. You can, Mr. Now, Cobb. But... I'll stand by you, son. He's for you. Huh. But this is impossible. Why? Why is it impossible to arrest every known gangster and racketeer in the city? We got to have evidence. Why? Because it's the law, that's why. Disregard the law. What? Now listen, Cobby. I know you're all upset. This kind of got you off your nut, and I don't blame you. But what you want to do is ridiculous. Sure, we know every grafter, every gangster in this town. Know them like a book. And we like to get the goods on them just as much as you. Why, well, there's a hundred murders, robberies, every crime in the county. We ain't ever solved, though we know these fellas did them. But we ain't got nothing on them. You'll arrest them all, with or without evidence. But, Mr. Mayor, if I did that, I... Don't worry. I'll take the responsibility. But it won't do no good. Morgan will have them all out in no time. Arrest Morgan, too. Arrest Morgan? Say, now, listen, copy, even so, we'd be up to our neck and writs of habeas corpus. Sure, you couldn't hold him in jail 20 minutes. Pardon me? You couldn't keep him in jail, don't you understand? You're not to put them in jail. Sure, you just said to arrest them. Yes, and deliver them to the great cellar of Teen Wang. Where? To the basement below the antique store of Teen Wang in Chinatown. Hold them there with an armed guard. Say, you have gone nuts. Well, of all the crazy... Did you ever hear the story of Fu Wong? No, I suppose he was Ling Po's grandfather. When Fu Wong was about to be executed by the wicked Mandarin Li, he took the city by sudden onslaught. And for 48 hours, he ruled supreme. During that time, he cleansed the wicked city of gang wall. For he seized every cruel and dishonest official and cut off their heads. Sure, son, that's a nice story, but then let's... he gave himself up to the emperor. And although honored for his noble deed, was himself executed. Because the law had been broken. Say, listen, son, we ain't got time to read the history of China. Teen Wang has in his possession the very sword used in beheading those bandits. Think of that. I'm thinking of your crazy idea of rounding up these gangsters. What are you going to do with them? What do you want them in the cellar for? You leave that to me. What do you got in mind, son? Now, remember, you ain't in China. Now, if you don't wish to carry out my orders, you may resign. Well, I'll stand by you, son, but I, I wish you'd tell and me. And you? All right, I'll round them up for you, but... Then do so. Say, son, you ain't going to do anything. Well, come on, Pat. Let's shoot the piece. And the all the cockeyed ideas. I'll have to strike suddenly and all at one time. Say, it's 7 o'clock. Yes, sir. and you'll have to work fast. Huh? Say. What was that story about the guy who cut off their heads? Ah, a lot of hooey to me. You don't suppose that... No, of course not. But still, he's full of those Chinese ideas. Oh, but he wouldn't. Now, don't worry, Pat. I suppose it's all right. Now, don't I... worry, I tell you. Don't worry. Hey, do you suppose he's really got the sword, that Chinese guy?
I got a perfect alibi. Buddy, want to take a little ride? Wait a minute, Merv. Come on. What's it all about? Search me. Just got orders to run you all in. Tell for the shoe shine, please, oh, yes. boss. Yes, of course. Okay. I don't belong to this guy. Come on, Joey, you're pinched. Huh? What for? Search me, mayor's orders. Well, give me the chance to get my hair cut. Come on, no wonder. What the? Say, you ain't got nothing on me. Well, put something on and come along. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You want me to come clean, don't you? Late, Mr. One. Got him out of the cellar? Yeah. Disarmed? Yeah. Where's the mayor? Down with him. What's he doing? I don't know. Well, why don't you find out? He won't let me down. He won't even talk to me. And we should never let him do this. Don't I know it? Listen, Jake. You're my boss. Give me the word and I'll call it off. I can't, Pat. I can't call it off now. I promised the darn fool I'd stick with him. And I've got to stick. What an idiot I've turned out to be. Well, I'm off to get Morgan. Yeah. What are you bringing us down here for? No time for riddles. Come on. Say, I know this, Jake. That chief friend of the mayor. Say, Mayo, what are you trying to pull around here? What's your gag? My gag? It ain't mine, brother. Ask the mayor. Where is he? Down the cellar with every crook in Stockport. Say, he can't get away with this. He's, he's gone nuts. That's just what I'm afraid of. You mean... He keeps jabbering about bandits in China. And now he won't talk to nobody but them chinks in the cellar. Is that big chink with the sword down there? It's full of chinks. Come on, Strazzi, down the cellar. I won't go. Come on. You can't do this to me, I tell you. I'll, I'll phone Morgan. You won't have to. He'll be here. You, you pinched Morgan? Lee, it's what's up. Come on, him. Lee, it's just him. What's that guy doing? What's that young heart? Just go. What's he saying? Who do you think I am, a chink? Come on, get down here. Did you know what? I said, go being, pumping, holding, be your way in. Sin, a bee, give me, good day, don't me. That good guy, Lloyd, let's try. Give me, good day, don't me. She do. That good. Not like. All right, all right, I'm going. Wait, wait, did you be not? Had he been coming, gun? Could he be a net? My who you got? Wait, 
I'm going to see the district attorney. He's right over there. <laughs> well, you can't hold me, Shigley. I'll be out of here in a half hour on the writ of habeas corpus. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but you'll have to write it in Chinese. Ah. What's the matter with you, Mayo? You're losing your mind? That's just what I'm doing. Well, you better find it, and you better find it right away. If I only knew what that guy was going to do down that cellar. story. Do you remember? The chink that cut off their heads. The very sword. Holy cats. Hey, you! Let it go. I gotta stop it. Let it go. I can't get... Look, 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 look. Let it go. You fool. Let it go. I gotta go down that cellar. Boy, what a razor. Heavenly man, what are you doing? Mr. Mayo, I request you to remain upstairs. Put Cobby, that sword. Oh, oh, no, put no, the no, 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 no. Copy, will you stop that? Wait, Wait. Leave me, Papa. Now you're going too far, son. You're going. Tell you, you got to lay off this stuff. You don't know what you're doing. The chief. Morgan. The big chief. Nice little show, Cobb. Go right ahead. Mister, I don't belong to this here gang. Call it off, Cobby, please. Oh, wait. What good did it do you? Do me? Well, I'm not thinking of myself. I'm destroyed. Of course, that's of little importance. It is important, however, that the rulership of this city must not revert to these gangsters and racketeers. That's why I'm going to destroy them. If your enemy force you over the edge of the cliff, death is sweeter if you leap with his body in your arms. Think, Poe. If you're just trying to scare him, Mr. Cobb, it's no use. This bunch is too wise. Scare them? Huh. Gentlemen, I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm simply offering you information. You're all aware of the political frame-ups, Corruption, the many crimes that have gone unpunished in this city. If any of you are guilty or know who is guilty of these crimes, you may confess. If you do not care to confess, you'll be executed. I fail to accomplish anything with your American methods. Therefore, I'm going to adopt the ancient Chinese system. You mean cut off their heads? I will now give you uh, two minutes. To decide whether you wish to sign a written confession. The choice is yours. Prison? Or the next world. In any event, Stockport will be rid of you, as it'll be rid of me. Ah, nuts. I guess we're supposed to be scared or something. Oh, it's a lot of hooey. Don't you think? Sure. He's only kidding. Boy, I hope he's only kidding. You know, that guy's just screwing enough to do it. I beg your pardon, but I said I don't belong to this here game. Cobby, you can't do this. That cheap stuff don't go here. You're not in China. You, you... Will you stop grinding that sword? Silence, please. You're a rotten actor, Jake. 
Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cobb, will you please listen to me? Please, Mr. Cobb! Hey, wait a minute. Why pick on me? Hey, let's go in turns. He was here before me. Oh, I was not. Go on. What's that for? What are you scared of, you fool? It's only a bluff. I know it's only a bluff, but why don't they fix someone else first? Say, listen, old fella. My doctor says I ain't supposed to have any excitement. I got liver trouble. Hey, you ain't really gonna do this. Don't do that, please. Save me, somebody. Don't do it. Ah! He's done it. ฉันก็ทะเลชื่อเลยเจ้าหนี้เวียนมาตายอีกเอาละอาบีชื่อละเอาเว้ยไล่นี่เงินอยากเพลินเลยปิดเลยละ Your hat, please. Thank you. Would you care to loosen your collar? Go! Go, 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 go. ของฟ้าไทยเคยไทยเคยทองงอสมตุลิลงปักปัจจิฮะไทยเคย I don't belong in this game! Uh. 
about those securities found in my safety deposit box. Yeah, Morgan done it with a frame up. He done it, I tell you. I'll talk. Only take him away. Take him away. Hey, Tommy, get that in writing. Uh, will you sign a confession to that effect? Yes, yes. I'll sign. I'll sign anything. Hey, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Uh, let me lose. Let me lose. By golly, son, this clears you. Uh, Mr. Strozzi, if there's any crimes of your own that you wish to confess, uh, don't hesitate to do so. Uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, would you care to confess? Will you... Will you call off these chinks? Uh, you'll be unharmed. All right. I did it. Uh, you did what? I, I bumped them off. You bumped uh, whom off what? Sid Bacon. You know. You know. Oh, of course. Uh, uh, would you be good enough to put that in writing? Why, sure. Sure, I will. Sure. Yeah. I won't talk. No? No. Go, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Moriarty, I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, give me a full account of the corruption in the public offices during Mr. Morgan's administration. How do you spell moider? Eh? So just say you bumped them all. Aber bitte schön, das tut mir furchtbar leid. Ich kann ja gar kein Englisch sprechen. Ich kann ja nur Deutsch sprechen. Aber bitte schreiben das doch in Deutsch nieder. Ich werde den Herrn Karp in Chinesisch übersetzen. Kowei an, ich sag man den Deutsch. Die non go, toi ne, check someone. I'll talk. I could write it. Sure. Dear Mr. Cobb. By this most unusual method, he obtained confessions of guilt of every unsolved crime of recent years. Had a boy, China. He has not only vindicated himself, but purged the city of countless criminals and completely smashed the corrupt political machine of former Mayor Morgan. Yeah, you? It is I, Miss Pet. Oh, you. What do you want? I have an important statement to make. Well, what is it? Won't you please come to the door? Uh, I can't. I'm dressing. Miss Pet, you remember that I recently proposed marriage to you and later retracted that proposal. I now wish to retract that retraction. Say, will you make up your mind? It is made up, Miss Pet. I want to ask... Wait a minute! Wait a minute! This time you'll put it in writing. Well, it's pretty good rice. I'm happy you like it. <laughs> that having a great stunt you pulled when you old boy. It was darn clever. Yes? Of course, you never fooled me for a minute. Oh, no, of course you didn't. But the boys to have felt for the saps. <laughs> Where you are? Mr. and Mrs. Cobb, sir. What? Well, a cordial greeting, my worthy Say, friend. you didn't marry him. I didn't, huh? You think that's painted on there? Well, I'll be. Where is he? He's telephoning the office. He'll be right in. May I offer you my humble felicitations? Thanks, Mr. Wang. Oh, we just dropped in to say goodbye. We're leaving for China tomorrow. You know what? You tell him. Say, Frank, he can't do that. Why not? It's his idea. So, he wants to go back to China. Say, you young idiot. I beg your pardon. Now, you can't walk out on this job. What do you want to go back to China for? China? Well, I'm not sure that I do. Say, will you two get together on this? Why, Ezekiel, dear, didn't you convince me that your duty, our duty, lies in China? Well, I did Oh, think... and after filling me with all those beautiful ideals, oh, oh, I'll get a divorce. Well, now, Miss Pet, I... We're going to China. Now, I don't want to be rude, but we're not going to China. We're going to China. We're not going to China. 
We're going to China. We are not going to China. Holy cats. What do they need of me in China? Why, this city needs a missionary more than China ever did. I have work to do in Stockholm. I can clean up this town. I can't clean up China. You could try, even though defeat be inevitable. After all, should the lark cease singing because winter must come? Ming Fo, now you quote me one. <laughs> right, I will. About that lark you mentioned. After all, should the lark bring worms to the seagulls and the baby larks are starving in her own nest? Ezekiel Cobb. 